David Kerr, tell me about hearing. Explain to us how it works. Well, there are really three key concepts to understand how hearing works. And one of them is that as sound is carried into the ear, it has to be converted to a vibration by very tiny cells in the inner ear. And the second key idea is that the vibration of these cells is converted to an electrical signal, which is eventually something the brain can understand. Mm Um, the third idea is a bit difficult, and that is to understand that each sound is actually made up of a lot of different sounds, a lot of different tones that happen simultaneously. And for the brain to understand a sound, it has to break the sound into its different parts, and then those different channels of information have to go to the brain separately. So the outer ear carries the sound into the eardrum. And then it's carried through the middle ear to finally reach the inner ear where the cochlea is. The cochlea is actually the organ that does this conversion to a neural signal. And then the auditory nerve carries that signal to the brain. Here you can see sound waves being collected by the external ear. And they're carried down the ear canal to hit the eardrum. When the sound waves hit the eardrum, it makes it vibrate. And then this vibration is carried by three tiny bones in the middle ear into the inner ear, the, where the cochlea is. The inner ear actually has uh, organs for two different senses. On the right is the snail-shaped cochlea that gives us our sense of hearing. And those tubular structures on the left give us our sense of balance. To understand how the cochlea works, we can zoom in in much more detail. And we can see that there's a special set of about 15,000 cells that do this conversion to neural signals. They're called hair cells. Because if we zoom in even further, you can see that each hair cell, which is about a thousandth of an inch long, has a tuft of special cilia coming from the apical surface from the top. And then if we look even closer, we can see how the tectorial membrane, which goes over the hair cells, contacts the tip of each bundle of cilia. And when sound makes the tectorial membrane move, it moves the cilia back and forth. That generates an electrical signal in the hair cells and then nerve impulses go to the brain. So this is kind of an interesting uh, process, but there's still something that we don't see about the process, and that is how the vibration of the cilia actually gets converted to an electrical signal. The tip of each cilium has a couple of key elements. There's this very fine tip link that connects the tip of one cilium to the side of the next taller one. And we know now that there's a special kind of a pore with sort of a gate or a trap door that can open to let electricity flow into the cell. And if we understand exactly how the bundle moves, then we can get a sense of how this might do the conversion. It was actually David's work that really elucidated this process to a very great degree. So the next image would show uh, what happens when sound bends these bundles. A movement of the bundle to the left, in this case, would stretch the tip links, and that would pull the gates of the pores open, and then electric charges, I've drawn them as little yellow dots here, would be able to move into the cell, and then they make the inside of the cell more positive, the voltage changes. And so then this voltage change is converted to nerve impulses, and that's really the magic of the conversion of a vibration to a nerve impulse. So the third thing that is really special about the way the ear works is when, you, when a violin plays or a bird sings or a child cries, it's really not just one sound, but it's a lot of different sounds that all happen at the same time and they're changing. And for the brain, say, to distinguish a violin from uh, a child's cry, it has to be able to pick apart all the separate sounds and then listen to them separately. And that process, the separation into different frequencies, is also carried out by the cochlea. Basically, the cochlea gets sound all at the same time, but different parts of the cochlea are activated by different sounds. And here you can see one low pitch sound activates one area, a higher pitch another area, and the nerve fibers that are attached to that area then send the information to the brain. Or, if you played several tones at the same time, like a chord, here you could see that several nerve fibers are activated all at the same time. 